Hello everyone and welcome back. Now, in the past few videos, we've been talking about the method of characteristics. We saw this as it applies to the wave equation, and we used our knowledge of, of characteristics and the wave equation to better understand solutions to the wave equation. We saw that we don't really necessarily have to think about them as waves, but really as solutions that propagate along these space-time characteristics. Now, what we've really been studying is partial differential equations of this form. They are first order in time. They might have some function maybe of space, time, even of p if you wanted to. Um, this is related to the speed along the characteristics. Then they are first order in space, and maybe there's some sort of forcing uh, q that could again be, uh, for example, a function of space or time or the unknown function p. But the point is, this is what's referred to as a quasi-linear partial differential equation. The quasi part comes from the fact that it's linear in the highest derivatives that show up, while c could be a function of space-time and the unknown function itself. This could be very, very nonlinear, but it is nonlinear just in the unknown itself. The quasi-linear aspect of this comes from the fact that the partial derivatives are linear. The highest derivatives in P are linear. Same thing with Q. Q could also be you know, a nonlinear function of X, T, and P, if you really want to keep this completely general. Now, we've seen that by letting space move along these characteristic curves, this gives us two equations. The first equation is my p equation, which tells me that it, the total derivative over t is equal to this q function. And we saw that when q is equal to 0, then the, the characteristics are straight lines. And or Sorry, when q is equal to 0, we saw that the, the solution stays constant along the characteristics. This is how the solution changes along said characteristics. And then we also have the equation for the characteristics, which was given by this uh, c term. All right? And so you can imagine this gets very, very complicated very quickly if you, know, you have very complicated c and q functions in here. Now, again, the application you've seen so far of quasi-linear partial differential equation is coming from the wave equation, right? And so with the wave equation, c was uh, constant, q was equal to zero. So what I would like to do in this video is I would like to derive a quasi-linear partial differential equation completely absent of the wave equation. In particular, what I'd like to do is I'd like to model traffic flow. Okay, so this is a really sort of fun application of the what we call these transport equations, these quasi-linear PDEs. And so here's how we're going to do it. We're going to define a traffic density, which I'm going to call uh, uh, P of X and T, which is the number of cars per mile or kilometer, depending on where you're watching this, it doesn't really matter. Uh, at time t, at time t, and location x, okay? And similarly, we are going to introduce a function q, which is going to be uh, the traffic flow, which is the number of cars uh, per hour passing point x, so passing uh, point x at time t. OK. And so what we're going to do is we're going to consider just a fixed portion of road. OK, so that's x between, say, a start point and an end point, a and b. And here's the modeling assumption that we'll make. We'll assume that there are no exits or entrances between A and B on our road, okay? So the only way to get into our piece of the road is to drive in through A, and the only way to get out is to drive out through B, okay? So you can think about this as maybe a highway or something like that. So then what we would do is we would define a quantity. 
we would say let n equal to the integral over space of p, which is just equal to the number of cars in this sort of strip of road from A to B, right? So this is the number of cars per mile. So this is a rate, you know, per X, if you want to think of it that way, sort of multiply by X, summing over all of the possible X's, that's giving you this. And so then what we could do is we could look at the differential of this quantity, the number of cars, this is a, just a function of time now, right? So it's the number of cars on the road at each point in time. So this would be the rate of change of the number of cars. Is it going up or is it going down, right? More cars on the highway, less cars on the highway. Well, this would be the derivative of this integral piece right here by definition. But at the same time, this is also equal to Q of A at time t minus q of b at time t. And that's because the cars here, the number of cars can only change by cars entering through a and exiting through b. This is the rate of cars entering through a, subtracting the rate of cars exiting through b. So now what you can see is we have a relationship between these these quantities q and p furthermore we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to simplify this thing right because this through the fundamental theorem of calculus is negative of the integral from a to b of the partial of q with respect to x x comma t dx now i have both integrals over x, so I could rearrange this thing to get this. So now I've got the integral from a to b of the partial of p with respect to t minus, uh, sorry, plus the partial of q with respect to x, and then dx is equal to zero. So all I did was just rearrange these two things, put the two integrals together, and life is good. But in this case, I'm saying that something integrates to zero. A and B here are completely arbitrary, right? I could take this patch of highway, I could take this patch of highway, I could take smaller patches of highway, right? And so if, if I change the endpoints here, but I always have this equation, this will tell me that whatever I'm integrating has to be zero, right? Because it doesn't really matter what I choose A and B to be here. So this gives me this equation right here. And so we're getting, you can probably feel it, we're getting a little bit closer to our quasi-linear equation. Not quite there yet, but this equation right here is called the conservation of cars equation. Okay, so let's actually, let's write that. This is called conservation of cars. Okay, and it just comes from the definitions of each one of these things, right? Differentiating this with respect to time gives you a sort of per hour in it. Differentiating this with respect to space gives you a per mile. So you can kind of, you can play with the units here and try and figure things out as you go uh, or see that things match up. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at is the car velocity. So... The car velocity in this case, well, I'm going to write this. It says Q is equal to some, or sorry, P times U. So we have a relationship between P and Q. And in one second there, where let's see what U is. U is a function of potentially, oh, sorry, this should be P, pardon me, which is equal to the car velocity. And so essentially what this says is it says that the number of cars per hour passing a point X at point T in space is essentially the density of the cars times the velocity that they are moving at, 
right? That should make sense to you, right? Lots of cars, they're moving quickly, then you have uh, lots of cars per hour moving past you. Now, here's what the assumption is going to be. I'm gonna make a simplifying assumption, okay? And here's my assumption. My car velocity does not depend on space and time, okay? So for example, there's no potholes, right? Potholes would be uh, an imperfection in, in space, for example, and they typically slow cars down, right? The velocity near a pothole is probably much lower than a velocity away from a pothole. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that velocity does not depend on uh, space or time. It only depends on the number of cars that are on the road, essentially. So, and this is a fair assumption, right? So if you have a nice paved highway, properly done, you know, no potholes, no problems in it, no emergency crew that's, that's sort of taking up a lane, for example. In this case, this tells you that your car velocity only depends on the velocity, okay? And you can imagine how this works because essentially, for example, if there is a high density of cars, everybody's probably moving pretty slowly, right? Lots of people on the highway, bumper to bumper traffic. However, if there's no one on the, on the highway, you can just fly down at the speed limit and not have to worry. But if you put all of these two things together now, this will give you a proper quasi-linear partial differential equation. Because essentially what you get here, now you have a relationship between Q and P. And so now this gives you plus, uh, sorry, C of P partial P partial X here. And in this case, where C is equal to Q prime of P, right? So here you have a relationship, Q is now a function just of P, you differentiate that thing, you get this new uh, C, which we've already seen is sort of related to the speed along the characteristics. And so let's go back to this. What would be the typical sort of functions that you would see? So typical models, well, essentially we would expect that, so uh, we would expect that U is a decreasing function of P, right? So as density goes up, velocity goes down. More cars on the highway, slower average speeds. And similarly, so at P equal to zero, nobody's on the highway or at least there's, there's sort of no density, and then one car just zipping down the highway, then cars go, cars go the speed limit. So they go some maximal, so they go the fastest at some maximal velocity, which we'll call U of zero, we'll say this is U max, okay? So we're not gonna assume people are speeding in our model here. And then at some, max density, right? So bumper to bumper traffic, whatever the worst possible density you can fit on the highway, because there is a limit, right? You can, cars take up so much space. Whatever the maximal density on the highway is, uh, we'll call that to be, uh, sorry, P max, pardon me. I keep drawing a row, P max. Well then, car velocity is zero. All right? Bumper to bumper tra traffic, it's so dense, nobody's moving at all. And so let's look at the simplest case. Well, you could have U of P is equal to, for example, U max times one minus P over P max. Really, really simple linear decreasing function of P. That would be you know, the simplest possible thing you could do. If that was the case, then your Q function would look like this. It would be U max, which is just a constant, times P one minus P over P max, right? So it's a sort of logistic function. It's a quadratic function. And then if you differentiate that, you'll get your C function, which is just P prime, or sorry, uh, Q prime, right, by definition. And so here, 
you get u max of 1 minus 2p over p max. So what we've done here is we've created a new equation, a new partial differential equation to work with that we can explore. Uh, sorry, this is equal to 0, pardon me that we can explore now that fits into our quasi-linear framework, right? So what we're going to do over the next few lectures is we're going to try and understand this system. And we're going to do it in the context of modeling traffic flow. We're going to look at fan-down solutions. We're going to look at shockwave solutions. And we're going to try to understand in better detail how to study this partial differential equation using the method of characteristics and applying it to traffic flow, okay? So, I'll see you all in the next video when we start talking about solutions to this thing.